I asked Glenna to bring, bring us a maquette of her design so we could see it three-dimensionally. And she had two weeks to produce this piece. And we now have the meeting, and about 40 or 50 people are there to review Glenna's piece. And Glenna was on stage. I mean, this was all about Glenna. And I introduced everybody around the room, and Glenna came. She had um, brought the, from the hotel, she got um, like a catering cart. And she had them put a white linen tablecloth over the catering cart, the, or the room service cart, so that there'd be a place to put the clay. So Glenna came in with the clay piece, and this is so priceless because <laughs> Glenna is just Glenna. And she starts talking about how she came up with the idea for this design and that she found that there were very few books. She said, I couldn't believe there were hardly any books out there about women who served in Vietnam. And then she talked about having talked to some women that she had met in Santa Fe and how she had met Anne Cunningham and how Anne had encouraged her to submit a design. And so she had some conversations after that with Anne and with these other women veterans. But as she's talking about the design, the head of the nurse fell off on the clay, and it just fell off, and it's rolling. And Glenna says, now don't that beat all. And she takes out of her pocket toothpicks, and she picks up the head of the nurse. She's sticking it back on, and she's using the toothpick. She said, you know, I always come prepared. It was so Glenna. And, of course, we all fell in love with Glenna immediately because we could see that this was a sculptor. This was a woman who really cared about this piece. It meant a lot to her, her personally. And she talked about how during Vietnam she was a mother. She was doing her work. I think she's out of college by that time, but she was getting on with her life. But she knew the war in Vietnam was going on, but it didn't really affect her personally. And so when she started studying about what the women had done, and you know Glenna loves to sculpt women, and she does them so beautifully. And she creates pieces that emote, that create for the viewer, you, it creates a, a connection that you link with that person. You see something that touches, there's something about that piece that touches you. And even in this very rough, roughly crafted clay piece. It wasn't in bronze yet. That came later to put it in, to make it into bronze. We could all see that Glenna had not only the ability to create something three-dimensionally, but she had the, um, she had the feelings that were necessary to create something that would move us and touch us and reach into us and mean something to us. And it was really not just looking at that clay that meant something to me personally. It was meeting Glenna. It was like, she is the woman that can do this for us. It was unanimous. Everyone in that room loved the, the piece, and they loved Glenna. And um, it was at that moment for me that I really felt I think this is going to happen. And you have to remember now, it's, all, it's the end of 1991. And I've been doing this since 1983, and I told you I wasn't going to cry. Take that out of here. Mm -hmm. So um, it was really a pivotal moment uh, for all of us. And all the representatives in that room had been someone who had done something for the project to bring it to fruition whether it was giving $100,000, um, like Merrill Lynch, um, $100,000 like the American Legion and the Veterans of Foreign Wars, the people who had, who had really put so much into the legislation, the legislative effort, the support around the country to support their sister veterans, and because there were a lot of male veterans in that room. And we all, everyone in that room now felt, in, felt invested in this design, so it was unanimous. So we felt we could move forward. So then Glenna says, she said, well, she said, <laughs> well, you gave me two weeks to create this. Now how much time are you going to give me to create the monument? 
<laughs> and I said, well, Glenna, can you do it in a year? And she, you know, you've seen Glenna, she kind of puts her hands on her hips. She said, a year, I can have it done in a year. I can have it done before a year. And she did, of course. But then the next step was to create the bronze maquette. And we had to bring that to the Commission of Fine Arts, the National Capital Memorial Commission, the National Capital Planning Commission, which are through the Department of Interior. And that, again, was a long, and it was a grueling process. That was not easy. Um, I would say the easiest commission by this time, the commission that fell in love with Glenna's piece was the Commission of Fine Arts. And that was the toughest commission to get through because they are the commission that deals with the aesthetics. They are the art commission. And we felt if we could get it through that commission, then the other commissions would be easier, although they weren't, they were more difficult. And that's another story, and I don't know if you want to hear that. But anyway, what was important then was that Glenna, um, when she was through with the clay in Santa Fe, in her studio, and it was ready for the Commission of Fine Arts to fly down to Santa Fe and look at the piece in clay that was six feet eight, larger than life, and myself, as I represented the board, and Charlie Atherton, who was the secretary of the Commission of Fine Arts, flew down, and he and I met with Glenna, and Charlie Atherton had to sign off on it, and I had to sign off on it. And so again, for me personally, to walk into Glenna's studio and to see it larger than life was, um, of course, very emotional. And I just knew this was it. We, we had our design. And when Charlie Atherton, who was very quiet, very professional, was circling the statue, and Glenna was explaining every little detail to him, and she didn't have to explain anything to me. I got it. You know, I looked at it, and it was like, she doesn't have to explain. It, it was perfect. But for Charlie's, um, you know, for his ears, he had to hear the, and he was very quiet and not saying a lot. And I wondered, what is he thinking? And he stepped back, and Glenna was very gracious. And um, he said, it's perfect. Now he's the secretary. It has to go before the chairman and the, co and the commissioners. But he signed off on it, which meant that Glenna could now create the bronze maquette in 24 inches and bring that to Washington, D.C. And that's the maquette you see behind me. And so now it's Glenna's turn again, and my turn again. And I explain from my point of view how this is what speaks to us as veterans, to the men and the women. And I talked about how we had had almost 50 people look at the design. We'd had a lot of input. It met all of our criteria. For us, it was perfect. And then Glenna had her opportunity to explain the piece. This time the nurse's head didn't fall off <laughs> because it was in bronze. And Glenna was very impressive. She was very impressive before the commissioners, and they voted unanimously to approve this design. And she uh, explained the kneeling woman and how that had been created um, because they saw the, the boards of the original piece, which was sketched. And it was interesting because one of the artists who was looking at Glenna's sketch said, this was when it was still anonymous. One of the artists looked at Glenna's sketch and said, this is a woman who can sculpt, or not a woman, because we didn't know it was a woman. But the remarks were, this is a person who can sculpt. And when we were, re were reviewing those sketches on those boards, it was important, that was an important comment because, okay, maybe this person can sketch and maybe this person can draw, but is, can this person create a sculpture, a sculpture? Can, we didn't know that. We're not professionals. I was so relieved to hear those words that whoever sketched this is a person who can sculpt. And of course, Glenna is a sculptor. So the Commission of Fine Arts is a great relief. And the press was there, NBC, ABC, all of the press at the time. And it made huge news. And her design is now in newspapers all over the country. And we're getting hundreds, if not thousands, of letters from people saying, 
we love this design. And they'd been following this process and like they didn't, they didn't care for some of the other designs. They were afraid it was never going to happen. People said under my leadership the project would fail. It was very unnerving, the whole long process, because there were people who felt it would fail and we lost support. We lost some support. We lost, I lost some friends, lost some board members who left because they just felt, you know, after nine years, how come we don't, after nine years of doing this, how come we're still where we are? And at the end of the day, I realized it took 10 years. It took that amount of time to find Glenna. It took that amount of time for the process to work. It took that amount of time for the powers to be in Washington, D.C. to realize we weren't going away. If we were going away, we would have left at three or four or five years. We would have given up. But after nine years of doing this, I think it became so evident to people, hey, we're not stopping. We're, what we're doing is the right thing. We're going to compromise. We're going to do everything it takes to honor the women who served in Vietnam. And if it took 10 years, that's what it took. So I guess, you know, after saying all of this now about the process and finding Glenna and getting the uh, approvals through the approval process, then we had that glorious day in 1993, Veterans Day at the dedication. And of course, Glenna was on stage and she spoke about her design and she was just brilliant because everybody loved Glenna like we loved her piece. I don't think, I don't think you can sculpt a piece like the Vietnam Women's Memorial without being a person of love. You come from love, whether it, was, it would have been a man or a woman. And I, I think it was only appropriate and sort of, you know, it was a woman who sculpted this for women. And she understood. She, she got the message. She knew what would speak to us. And she captured, she wanted to capture, she knew that the Vietnam Women's Memorial Project wanted to honor all the women, not just the nurses. That was very clear in our criteria that Red Cross women served in Vietnam, women who were administrative workers, women who were enlisted women, they weren't officers. We had women who were, who were air traffic controllers, photojournalists, intelligent officers. There was, you know, and women of color, Native Americans, Afro-Americans, uh, Asian Americans, all of us, Puerto Rican women, and well, every creed, every color, every rank. So when Glenna sculpted this piece, that's the other piece she got was that, how was she going to honor all the women? So you see no rank, you see no insignia, you do see dog tags, but that was universal. We all wore the dog tags, and it meant we were in a war zone. We wear dog tags in a war zone. And she captured through each woman, I think, not because of what they did, or the rank they wore, or the clipboard they carried, or the IV that they hung, she captured who we were, not what we did. And who we were, were was that woman who is the nurse, and it's obvious that she's a nurse, not because of her insignia, not because of the caduceus on her shoulder, but because she's tending to that wounded soldier. And she's the woman who's very focused she is so focused on that soldier, she hears nothing else, she sees nothing else, she's tuned out to the world except to that soldier. And she's, she's, you see the compassion in her, and you see her skills, and you see her strength, but you also see her anguish that this soldier might die, and I have to, if he dies, it, he can't die. I, I have to, this soldier has to live. And, and so Glenna said at the dedication that the dressing around that soldier's eyes are there because that soldier is anonymous. That soldier is anyone's son. He could be Native American. He could be Afro-American. He could be an officer. He could be a grunt. He could be a pilot. He could be a medic. He's anyone's son, regardless of what he did in Vietnam. And she was able to capture again she captured that humanity rather than identifying by all of our military identification that we get into. But it was a person. It was someone's son. And, and then she said, and he will live. 
And all those names on the wall are those who died. And that is already represented in the memorial, that nurses were there to care for those who died, but we were also there for the living, and that soldier will live. And I'll never forget those words that Glenna said. And then there's a standing woman. And what she had read, everything she knew, was that we were always listening for those helicopters. And every one that who served in Vietnam knows when they look at that woman what she's looking for. And the other thing Glenna said was that, you know, um, for those who served in Vietnam, we know they're looking for a helicopter. Or maybe they're looking for God, you know, and then we laugh and we say, well, they were one and the same thing. <laughs> the helicopter was God because the helicopters came to rescue and they brought the soldiers to us. So there's that. It's not literal, but it is. You know, in that sense to us, she's looking for a helicopter. And what that meant for us was anguish, and the choppers are coming, it meant that sense of dread. Now they're coming again. The casualties are coming to us. So the standing woman has her hand on the nurse's elbow or arm, like, there for, I'm here, I'm supporting you. Doesn't mean I'm a nurse, but I'm here. I'm in support of whatever is happening. And you see that sense of just, I'm here. It's that um, present moment. And she's in the present moment of everything that's happening in Vietnam. The nurse is in the present moment of, I'm saving this soldier's life right now. And the standing woman is a woman of color and represents whomever. And then we come around, because Glenna did talk about she wanted a sculpture in the round. It had to be in the round, unlike other sculptures that you may stand back and you look at it. And we know all those sculptures, and there's, sculpt and there's nothing wrong with that, but you stand back and you look at it. But for Glenna, it was important that people circle it, and they experience each figure personally and individually, and they touch it. She did not want a chain around it. She did not want a fence around it. She worked with a landscape architect very closely with George Dickey that this setting, this landscape setting, would, would relate to the and be conducive to visitors w looking at it from any angle they choose to at any given moment and be able to feel that they could come up to it and touch it and look at it in the round. So it's like a surprise figure and Glenna really designed it that way. When you're facing it, you don't really see the kneeling woman. So now you've experienced the nurse, you've experienced the standing woman, and now you come around and you see the woman kneeling, looking down, and the empty helmet is there. And I, I've always said that the kneeling woman is how I felt at the end of the day in Vietnam. She's fatigued, she's anguished, she's feeling that futility of war, and she's very human. And it's interesting because the Red Cross women, that's the woman they relate to. They go to her. When you see Red Cross um, artifacts and things that are left at the memorial, the Red Cross puts their Red Cross scarves around the neck of the woman. They, the, the four women who died in the Red Cross in Vietnam, their names are there with all the other Red Cross photographs. And that's sort of their place, sense of place, where they put their things. So that's been really fascinating that that's the woman they would relate to. And of course, Glenna says it's the heart and soul of the piece. I, I think the whole piece is the heart and soul of all of us. But it, it, there's something about that kneeling woman. woman. And it's, I love it because when I go down there and I see children, they, they are at eye level with the kneeling woman, and so the little kids go up and they touch her hat, and they get underneath and they want to look under their, they look under her hat and they want to see her, her face, and they kind of stick their fingers in her eyes and touch her face, and it's really, I love just standing back and being in the corner and watching how people interact. It's, it's just amazing how um, Glenna was able to reach out really to every visitor and touch everyone, veteran and non-veteran alike. Because for those who didn't serve in Vietnam, 
they see, oh, there, my gosh, there were women in Vietnam. And this is how they looked in Vietnam. So, and then this, I was going to get to the sandbags. And how, how did she figure that out? But Glenna also figured out the setting, and that's the sandbags. Everywhere in Vietnam there were sandbags. Everywhere you went, everywhere you looked. Sandbags, that was the nature of the war. So Glenna captured really all the symbolism of the Vietnam War in that one piece. And of course when I visit the memorial, I, I see that the children and the Iraq veterans in Desert Storm, Afghanistan, all those soldiers who have gone after us and those veterans, and it's a very popular memorial for all of them. That's where they come on Memorial Day and Veterans Day, and they come in uniform, many of them. Many of them you can tell because of their haircuts. And so it's like Admiral Krause said at the dedication when we invited him to be a keynote speaker because he had been such a champion of our cause. And he, he had said in his words, I'll paraphrase, but and one of the, maybe one of the greatest Maybe one of the greatest results of this memorial will be for all future generations to know that these women served in Vietnam and beside their brother soldiers and all generations will know that we were there and that we served with honor and with dignity. And it's there forever, for eternity. And hearing those words for me personally, it fulfilled it fulfilled the entire vi vision because for me it wasn't just about the women, my sister veterans, and it wasn't just about the men, but it was about our kids. And how would our kids know? How would our children know that we were there for our brother soldiers, that we stood side by side with them? And the other thing that I haven't said, and I have to, I have to say whether you use it on camera or not, but I have to say it is, it was also for those mothers and fathers and families who lost their sons and daughters in Vietnam, that they would know that we were there with their son or their daughter when they were wounded, when they were suffering, when they were dying, that we were there for them. And I had, I had an experience that I'm sure many of us nurses have now had, but a man came up to me, this was years ago, and he found me standing by the statue, and he knew who I was. And um, he stand, stood for a long time looking at the wounded soldier right, right in front of the wall. And he stepped back and he saluted. And then he came over and he took me in his arms and he started to cry. And he said, I hope you were the nurse of my son. My son was killed in Vietnam and that's him. I hope you were his nurse. And then you know, he just sobbed. He was just sobbing. And it was so, I think, so healing for him and healing for me, for both of us. And he said, I know you weren't his nurse, but it's just so good to know that you were there for, for our sons. And th there are so many, there are thousands of these stories, thousands of stories. It's the mystery, it's the magic of the memorial, and it continues today. It's been 14 years since we dedicated Glenna Goodacre's monument, and people are still coming every day to the memorial. And I'm only there two days out of the year, and I see what's happening, think of what's happening 365 days out of the year, and how that sculpture touches so many people in so many ways. If it's not just for educational purposes, when those school buses, I mean literally school buses get off and these children come marching through and look at, and they go home and the teachers have them write stories. They have to write about what they saw in Washington, D.C. And then the, the teachers often, I'll, I'll say this, often the teachers will collect those little stories and they send them to us at the project, the foundation, which we're foundation now. We collect those stories and they're in our archives. And so we know how that memorial has touched every generation, every age, veterans and non-veterans alike, and active duty soldiers today. So it's, it's a magnanimous piece. And, and Glenna truly is a magnanimous woman. And we love her. 
and we love what she did for us. And um, we just want her to get better and heal now for her, from her own wounds that she is healing from now from, from being um, unwell. And we just want Glenna to be well for, and to enjoy her retirement as she so deserves. <laughs>